We are live. Welcome to the Sazcast, everybody. All we talk is money. I'm your host, Adam Sosnick, and I'm here to help you build your wealth and save that money. You know what it is. David, good to see you, buddy. We're back. We're back. We've been off for, what, three weeks? Dude. Uh, we, there was Christmas. There was New Year's. There is uh, Omicron. Oh, Things are going yeah. on out there. Omicron variant sweeping the country right now. But, they David, coach? you've been... <laughs> but you're back. I'm back, dude. It feels good to be back, Sauzcast episode 17. If you're this is your first time being with us, welcome. Welcome to Valuetainment. Welcome to Valuetainment Economics. Welcome to all you guys out there in YouTube internet land. This is Sauzcast episode 17. If you're not familiar with what we do here, we bring you the most valuetaining money stories going on in the world today. That's what we are, David. We're Valuetainment. We bring money stories. In a valuetaining way, do we not? I can't see it any other way. That's the only way to see it, my friend. <laughs> so anyway, we've been gone for a little while. This is our first show of the new year. We're actually moving to a new corporate headquarters tomorrow. Oh, yeah. yeah. Tomorrow. Yeah. Um, they asked me to help move. I said, here's 100 bucks. Hire a mover, buddy. I don't play that. But anyway, yeah, yeah. we are moving tomorrow, and I'm excited for that. But anyway, so this is, our la- I think, our last time in this specific studio. Wait till you see where we got in store for you. Bigger. Better, badder, sexier, hungrier. Yeah. For some reason, David likes hungrier. eating. Dude, we're hungry um, now. We, we got it. So anyways, it feels good to be back. Sauzcast episode 17. I'm Adam Sauzic here to help you build your wealth and save that money. Now, what do I say every episode about most people? Most people are most people. Most people are broke. Most people are living paycheck to paycheck. Most people won't take an hour out of their day to listen to a podcast like this to get better with their money, but not you guys. Not you guys, because you're better than the most. Right, Dave? Absolutely. Okay. We said 100 episodes in, you're going to be a billionaire. And that's why we took some time off. Let me catch up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> well played, sir. He's like, you know what? I think I'm thinking about like 110 episodes in. Let's not do this exactly yeah. uh, on cue. But we anyway, it. yeah. it's, uh, it's great to be out there. I see a lot of people in the chat, the live chat. Happy to be back. Respect. We missed you. We love you. We appreciate you. All you value tainers out there, and if this is your first time being here, hit that subscribe button, tap, 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 root that like button, and join us and get better with your money. Now, what I always say about money is that it's 50% knowledge, 50% behavioral. All right, what does that mean? 50%, you know that you need to save and, and invest and get out of debt and, you know, budget. You know these things, but are you actually doing them? That's the problem. Most people know what to do, but they just don't do it. You know the deal, David. You know, you know that you need to hit the gym. Are you going to the gym? <laughs> Not you. No, absolutely. But are you actually doing it? Yeah, exactly. So um, that's why we're here, to inform you, to valuetain you, but also to call you out when you need to be called out, to basically, you know, check up on you and just make sure you're doing the things that you need to do, accountability, but also have fun while doing it. Nobody likes someone who's annoying. I told you this. I told you that. I'm just putting it out there. I told you to save that money. I told you to save to invest. I told you to have a budget. I told you, David, 100 episodes in, you're going to be a billionaire. Don't want to be that guy, but I told you so. I told you so. Anyway, Happy New Year. It's good to be back. Can we talk some money? Let's do it, man. Let's do it. I've been waiting. Okay, let's talk some money. So, David, did you hear about the richest New Year's party ever? So, it went down on a Swiss billionaire's mega yacht in the ritzy island of St. Baltz. Jeff Bezos was there. I'm not sure if you've seen these memes going on. He's dressed up in a 70s disco outfit. Basically, people are clowning him, calling him basically the corny billionaire version of Jeff Bezos. I'm sorry, of of Pitbull. (laughs) Uh, Tons of celebrities were there. Leo, Drake, my girl crush, Dua Lipa, Meek Mill's there performing, Lil Baby performed. Basically, 500 VIPs were there. And if you combine the net worth of these 500 VIPs that were there, it would be more than most countries' GDP. Get That's the kind of party they're doing on these mega yachts in St. Bart's. I might have said five VIPs, 500 VIPs on this mega 500. yacht. 500? Yes. Yikes. Jeff Bezos was there. They're clowning him. Now, are you a fan of Jeff Bezos? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm an Amazon Prime. I I'm a fan. love Amazon. Yeah. 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 yeah, my life would not be what it is today without Amazon. You know, people hate on Jeff Bezos. He's too rich. He's too wealthy. I use Amazon. Hey, he hasn't underpaid me. <laughs> <laughs> Other people he has. But anyway, so people are kind of clowning him. But let me read this story. This is a page six story if you want to pull this up. Yeah. So the party commenced, a.k.a. it started, at a dinner party at um, 
There's a guy called Richie Akiva. I've actually met him a few times in my party days. He's uh, he founded a, a partner of Butter, the Butter Group. They they have clubs like One Oak in uh, New York, L.A. He's a, he's a he's a big wig. So it started off at his house at this party, and um, then around 1 a.m. it moved to this Swiss billionaire's 150 million dollar 315 foot mega yacht. I believe we have a picture of the yacht somewhere. And this uh, this Swiss billionaire. His name is Ernesto Bertarelli. Sounds more Italian, but, you know, Switzerland is next to Italy. Um, while you're pulling off this boat, side note, if you end up partying uh, on New Year's on a Swiss billionaire's yacht, you're doing all right for yourself. David, how was your New Year's, by the way? Dude, I was invited to this party, um, to this one, the VIP one. <laughs> you were there, yeah. No, I wasn't. I just I couldn't make it. I was tied up. I had some stuff to do, so I just spent it with family. Oh, nice. But uh, yeah. they, they seem to have a good time. Yeah, you did end up going to that comedy show where other friends of ours went no, to it here in South no. Florida. I heard some good stuff about that, that yeah. show. Our friend Nancy um, loved that show. Loved that show, from what I hear. So yep. did Gerard. Yep. Um, so anyway, there's. A, have you ever been to St. Bart's, by the way? Have you ever even heard of St. Bart's? No. Okay. St. <laughs> Bart's, I've actually been there. Um, was I was in there, I think, 2016. It is a French island in the Caribbean. Mm. So, you know colonialization and all that kind of good stuff that was going on. France yeah. basically went in there and uh, took over that island, and it is a very fancy. It was so fancy that I ended up speaking with a French accent the entire times that I was there. I don't I assumed that. a new identity. I actually, not even kidding right now, went by the alias of Patrice. <laughs> Patrice. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, luckily I was uh, with some... Um, you know, I would consider myself well off. I wouldn't say that I'm super rich, but I was with some super rich friends yeah. that took care of everything. Um, we did an episode about how basically how to travel the world for free. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Uh, remember that? Uh, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, you know, help, you know, yeah. Yeah. You'd provide be- value. Don't be a cheapskate. Throw in where you can throw in. So, anyways, I did that at this uh trip to St. Bart's. I was with my my ex at the time. We took a trip there. Basically, what it is is you have to fly to, I think, St. Martin's in a plane, and then from St. Martin's you take a puddle jumper, literally like a six-person... A puddle jumper. Yeah, a puddle jumper. <laughs> um, to fly to St. Bart's. Um, like, it's such a small plane that it's the pilot. <laughs> One of our friends was sitting shotgun in the plane, and then five or six of us were in the back. That's how, like, small the plane is right there. And it's um, nerve-wracking as hell. Uh, oh, but I'm it, sorry, your trip to this. I'm sorry beautiful. that you had to go to St. Bart's. <laughs> I was so scared. Yeah, but... Uh, I took an uncomfortable trip to Orlando this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Orlando, yeah, uh, Disney World. But uh, very nice place, very expensive. And um, I remember coming back into the country, and um, I'm because it's a French island, I, I'm pretty sure I had euros. Yeah. And I remember exchanging what was the equivalent of like $12 of euros. And all my rich <laughs> friends are like, look at this loser, you know, taking the time to cash out 12 bucks. I'm like, 12 bucks, 12 bucks, 12 bucks, right? Yeah. And I remember having a picture of like $10 and like, you know, eight quarters in my hand and my friends are gathering around me like, look at this, save that money, loser. I'm like, yeah, save that money. But, <laughs> 12 bucks. But yeah, 12, what would you do if you had $12 of euros? Would you just you no, trade I, it in? You'd yeah. Take, I, American money. Yeah. Save that money. Save, yeah, what am I going to start Anyway, so that's my start of St. Bart. So basically, let's get back to this party. They're on the yacht. They're partying. Meek Mill's performing. Lil Baby doing his little thing. He's, uh, you know, um, performing. Drake's there. Dua Lipa. I'm, like, the biggest fan of Dua Lipa. Yeah, I think she texted me to go. Total mega. She texted you again? Yeah, right, she won't she stop won't texting leave me. You it's alone. so awkward. Um, he's basically, these people were partying till basically 10 a.m. They broke my cardinal sin. Oh, no. The only reason I'm alive, because I grew up in South Beach, I lived in Miami, I've partied a lot. The only reason I'm alive <laughs> right now is, number one, I don't do, like, hard drugs. I don't. Right. I've been, full disclosure, on PBD podcasts. I'll smoke a joint from time to time. Don't worry about that. But I don't mess with the powder, the white stuff, or anything like that. Right. And then here's my rule. Sun's up, Adam uh, goes to bed. Well. Okay. I don't stay up. Yeah. Like, there's no benefit being what's, up at 9 a.m. the next day. What's your, like, cutoff? Whatever the, whatever, like, whatever the sun comes up? I'm just saying, that's, like, the rule. Holy hell, yeah. Like, I'm sure. I'm, yes, I go to bed at midnight, 2 o'clock, whatever. But if it's 6 a.m. and the sun's coming up, I don't care what we're doing. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I grew up in Miami here. Like, this is yeah. not uncommon. So, but that's my rule. But anyways, these people party till 
10 a.m. They broke my cardinal sin. But, you know, of all this that's going on, St. Bart's, you know, little Baby, Drake, yeah. people partying, Leonardo DiCaprio's there. The person that's in the news the most uh, is this uh, Jeff Bezos guy. Have you seen the picture that, that is basically circulating the interweb the, right now? The tight shirt. Of him, the tight shirt, the girlfriend on his side. He's wearing, like, heart-shaped glasses. Yeah. He's wearing a disco teco shirt. Uh, everyone's talking about his outfit. Now, personally, I don't give two shits about his outfit. He's at, a, he's at a disco party, dressed up like he's from the 70s. More power to you, bro. If you want to go in disco attire and you want to be knockoff Pitbull, have at it, bro. Have your moment. There it is. All good. There it is. Yeah, we got that? He looks, like, absolutely jacked. Yeah, by the way, he is a little... He's, he's definitely um, looking better than ever. That's um, This is the same guy that drove a Honda Accord after he became a billionaire, by the way. Now he's, you know, Mr. Cool Guy, wearing his sunglasses, jacked, like you said. Yeah. He's partying. Listen, this is what $200 billion and a nice, fresh divorce will do to a guy like that. <laughs> That's so true. Okay. This is a newly divorced exactly. man right there. And he's dating. Her name is Lauren Sanchez. She is the ex-wife of Tony Gonzalez, that guy over there. No. Tony Gonzalez is one of the greatest football players, greatest tight ends in NFL history. Talk about a tight one. end. Listen. <laughs> hey, you. That's so awkward, dude. They, so these guys yeah. just taking a picture together. I mean, you know. Ah. I'm good, It's bro. an ex. They broke up like 10 years ago. They got a kid together. It's all good. And is this... The, oh, that's weird. That's the kid. That's the son. That's that's her son, and that's, that's Jeff Bezos' soon-to-be stepson. That's weird. Exactly. Well, you know, he's probably your age. Go be friends with that guy. You'll have a great time. No, partying. he doesn't look like a cool kid. Looks that guy was cool raised man. rich. He probably sucks. <laughs> no, he wasn't raised rich. He was... I mean, he wasn't Jeff Bezos. He's, 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 he's right, raised by he's, an NFL player. Like, uh, yeah. wealthy, but not billionaire. Um, anyway, people are so <laughs> focused on this outfit, and there's a there's a metaphor there. Okay, um, you know what I'm focusing on? Not on the outfit. I'm focusing because that's the picture that he posted on Instagram. I'm not posting on the actual picture he posted. I'm focusing on his caption, his message oh boy. to his followers. Now he said this: We had so much fun last night celebrating with a crazy disco party with the family, but the new year is also a great time to take stock and focus on personal growth. Renewal, rebirth, and paying careful attention to each moment of your life. What's the analogy there? Most people, New Year's, we talk about most people are most people. Most people party, they're hungover, they're regretting their decisions maybe from the night before. Um, they go into the New Year with, you know, goals. They go to the gym, they're going to eat healthier, they're going to do better. And then two weeks later, they basically yeah. uh, succumb to the pressures of normal life. A um, couple of days before New Year's, PBD called, called me into his office, Patrick Bet David, CEO of Valuetainment, PHP. Yeah. And he says, look, don't go into the new year being the exact same person you were last year. Doing the exact same things that you did this past year won't get you to where you want to go, a.k.a. you got to level up. And it might be hard to do, and you might need to do things that – you're not accustomed to doing, you might need to try a little harder, wake up a little earlier, do a little better, read a little more, whatever it is, but leveling up. And I said, Pat, thank you, man. That's a great message. And let me um, let me revisit that after I get drunk on New Year's. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> I was like racing double reading the second. I was like, well, nah, this ain't the time. No, but I do appreciate that. But that's sort of the, the point here of this message here. What's my point? Most people are focused on Jeff Bezos being sort of like a knockoff pit bull. You're making your jokes. Look at this guy, this goofy little shirt. And, right. You know, the girlfriend and the sun, the glasses, whatever, disco. But the message that he's basically saying is take stock and focus on your personal growth and reinvent yourself. And it's essentially the same message that Pat gave to me. is like don't be the exact same person you were last year or the year before the year after that. Now, Pat's been very explicit about this on the PBD podcast about – one years, one year he was, uh, I think on New Year's, and he told a story about he's sitting in a car with with his buddy. He oh, had no right. money. They got water from In and Out. They got sugar packets, and they yeah. got some lemons, and they shook it up, made lemonade. And he goes, "Damn, I am so broke. I can't even afford lemonade. I got to make my own ghetto rigged version of lemonade. Yeah. I got to get better." And every year, clearly, the guy has gotten better. So that's my message. It's a new year. You know, you could do the lip service thing. I'm going to get better. I'm going to try harder. I'm going to lose weight. I'm going to make more money. Whatever it is. 
but are you actually doing it? And are you who's holding you accountable? Like I talked about with the beginning of the show, with money and personal finance, 50% knowledge, right? 50% yeah. I know I need to do better. I know I need to eat healthier. I know I need to work out. The other 50% is behavioral. Who the hell is actually holding you accountable to do that? And if it's not yourself, maybe it's someone like PBD or a leader in your life. So that's why I wanted to start with this New Year's story, a little fun, a little attainment. But there is a message there. And that message that Pat called me into his office did resonate with me. And, um, you know, we're going to level up. David. Talk to me. What are your thoughts on what I just said? Uh, It's, you know, we kind of talked about it before we started the pod about... um what you know resolutions and, and all this and mm-hmm. I, yeah it's i think the everyone makes a resolution someone asked me on new year's like what's your resolution dude i don't remember the last time i kept a resolution you don't remember the last no time. it's every year it's like i'm gonna work out more mm. it doesn't work out um but i think <laughs> one thing you see this clearly it ain't working Look at me. <laughs> um but i think it's just um it, dude what you everyone needs is what everyone lacks is it's it's discipline it's just mm. discipline dude whatever goal you have it's just discipline i think most of us just lack that discipline if you just stick to that one thing yeah. you're disciplined to it it'll 100% come true and it's just uh time to be disciplined I like love it, it. You can work even just a little bit, but as long as you do that little bit every day. Compound interest. Compound interest, A little bit interest, better every bro. single day. This reminds me of a quote. I don't think he made it up, but uh, my good friend Chris Patrice. Humphreys will oh, okay. talk about. <laughs> uh, he says, if it was easy, everyone would do it. Yeah. You know? Yeah, exactly. Um, so good things are hard to do. They're, it's the hard part, and that's yeah. the thing. It's like maybe it's not even hard. It's mm-hmm. hard to stay consistent. Yeah, exactly. You can that's go to the, the gym bit. one time. Can you go five days a week yeah. for the next year? Can you go three weeks right. in a row? It's easy, you know, to not party one weekend. Can you do that for six months exactly. where you need to save money? Because so, the actual act is easy, right? Yeah. It's just about how consistent you are. That's the anyone part. can, you know, take, take a, a reservation. reservation but, but can, can you, you hold the reservation? reservation? <laughs> Thank you, David. Anyway, that's the story. Happy New Year's to everybody. We appreciate. It. We love you. And hopefully any resolution that you've made in your life, you're actually going to live up to it. I'll tell you the two resolutions that I made. You ready? Yeah. Um, I said that I was going to drink less. And I'm not even a big drinker. I'm writing this down. But I do tend to go out and, you know, next thing you know, you have five, six drinks. And, you know, I hate the way I feel in the morning. Yeah. But I feel like. If you go out, if you're if you're someone like me that is a social creature, you are. I know you like to go out. Yeah. It's it's just very comforting to have something in your hand. Yeah. It's just like creature of habit. Like I like even on the show, I have a pen in my hand. I got it's just something. You too. <laughs> oh, so no. when I'm in a club, I like to have a thing. So now, because yeah. you know, you kind of not gonna lie, you kind of don't want to just be the guy with a bottle of water in a club. It's just that, not I a, was just about to say that. But you get a glass, you put some club soda in there. Some ice, maybe yeah. a little dollop of orange juice, and it looks like you got a cocktail, and you're not getting drunk, and you know you're saving that money too. Yeah. Our boy so Kai that was does one that, or did that. Kai, for a while. exactly. He stopped exactly. Drinking. And then he went to Norway, and then there was a problem. And then my yep. second uh, resolution, this is this is going to be hard to do. Uh oh, is curse less. Yeah. Oh, no fucking yeah. way. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, when I did stand up comedy, I remember someone saying, "Dude, you're you're great, you're good, but you curse a little too much." I was like, "Yeah, fuck you." <laughs> uh, but then I said, "Okay, all right." But now that we're doing podcasts, we're on air. I do business. It's like I don't need to curse that much. I will say, I am a huge fan of the f word. Like, I love that f in word. It's just very a passionate. It word. is. It is. My mom's like, "Stop saying that," and she might hear this. She'd be like, "I'm so proud of you, not cursing." <laughs> F you, mom. No. <laughs> but that is, a, that is a, a goal of mine. So if you would, I yeah. would love to. And David, you'll man this. We don't need to do this right a second. But if you're listening, and I, A, I appreciate, but B, type in, write in what your New Year's resolution is. Type it in. Let's see Make it. more money, lose weight, find a girlfriend, boyfriend, drink less, party less, curse less, whatever it is. I'd like to see in... The comments, what you're doing. Anyway, that's that. Uh, David, you'll man in that. But happy New Year's, everybody. Let's um, let's keep it moving, as they say. Um, this next story that I want to talk about right now, um, America, right? We love a good comeback story. It could yeah. be anything. It could be any career you have. It could be a hero. It could be an athlete. It could be a business person. It could just be a general run-of-the-mill person. Now, here are five real-life case examples of millennials 
who beat the odds and developed and leveled up during the pandemic. They Let's basically they came back from from the dead, essentially, and they made a career out of themselves. So here are five stories. These are real life case examples. You guys listening, this is like this is something that I could potentially say your name in something like this. So these are regular people who basically were struggling. They beat the odds and they leveled up during the pandemic. And there's a message in all of these five of these stories, and they're very relatable. Um, number one, you can always start over. It's not too late. So here's a story. So before the pandemic, you got a couple called Karen and Sylvester Akpon, right? So they owed more than $100,000 collectively in student loans. I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that understand where this came from. Yeah. And they were paying 4200 bucks a month for a five-bedroom house in California. That ain't cheap. 3200 for a five-bedroom house? 4200 4,200. Yeah. Five uh, bedrooms? Five bedroom. Who knows? Anyway, they owed a lot of money. They were probably making decent money, um, but it was all going to student loans and to rent. So um, they had a kid. They're, they're starting a family. So there's hope out there. Listen to what they did here. This is, this is a little unique. Um, so they basically sold their house. They, they, they took the money and ran, and they lived out, an, out of an RV throughout the entire pandemic, and they've been traveling the country. So now they travel the country. They earn money by blogging, not sure how much the money they make, but also doing social media campaigns. Very interesting story. They probably, you know, obviously made it onto CNBC for this story right here. Uh, And they paid off, here's the silver lining, they paid off all their student loans, and now they're focusing on saving, investing, and building wealth. So the moral of the story was it's not too late to start over. They were going down a path, traditional path. You know, starting a family, living in California, spending forty-two hundred bucks a month for a house, hundred and ten grand in student loans, to be exact. Uh, and they said, "I don't want to live this life." And they just sold everything, sold their house, took the money and run, got an RV, started making money, doing something out of the ordinary. And now they've paid off over a hundred thousand dollars in student loans, and they're actually beginning to save that money to invest. So, it, it, kudos. To the Akpans, if they end up hearing this, shout out to you guys traveling the country um, and paying off your student loans. This is something, uh, have you ever considered traveling the country in an RV? Dude, I, I was, wow, that's a lot of courage. I mean, because that's, yeah, I mean, that's kind of uncomfortable, though, if you really think about it. I mean, that's a tiny space for a while to live in. Ooh, yeah. And then there's that fear of like, Okay, we are actually doing this. We just sold the house. Like, there's no stepping back. But, I mean, look, the proof is in the pudding. They paid off $110,000 in student loans, clearly. I think that's excellent. They're ahead of the game. Sure, and, like, if they can handle that stress of, like, living Mm -hmm. in close quarters and not having a home and, like, hey, hey, Bob or Sylvester, oh, let's uh, love to come over. Yeah, I live in an RV now. Well, I'll just drive over to your house and hang out at your house. Yeah, so great for them, dude. More power to them. I don't think a lot of people would be able to do that, and Mm -hmm. they seem very happy. Look at those uh, beaming... Smiles right there. There they go. Um, that's the awesome. Pump. That's awesome for them, dude. A lot of people could not do that. Just sell their home. I mean, how about this? Flip it. Flip it. Okay. They don't do this. Yeah. They're paying their 4200 bucks yeah. a month. They're paying their you know $2,000 a month in student loan, whatever the payment yeah. is. How long does that take before, to, before they get ahead? Do you know on average that it takes about 18 to 20 years to pay off student loan yeah. debt? Yeah. They did it in a year and a half. Yeah. That's called you got to do what you got to do. That's called um, doing what everybody else isn't willing to do. Exactly. Yeah, dude. That's called living a different type of vibe so you can live the rest of your life the vibe that you want to live. Dude, that's yeah, that's exactly it. Respect to the Akpons. Respect to the Akpons. Anyway, number two of these five case examples of real life people doing extraordinary things uh, is have a plan B. That's number two. So a lady called Destiny Adams, she works for the state of Michigan as a child welfare specialist. She was earning 60 G's a year. Uh, she says it's not the most exciting job, but it provides her with stability and benefits like health insurance, but she could not get ahead. So enter the old-fashioned side hustle that inspired her. So what did Destiny do? She operates now a YouTube consulting business and runs the Destiny Hair Collection, a small business selling wigs and hair extensions. Ladies love their wigs and hair extensions. Just look at Janita, a girl in our office. She's got probably a a wig a week that she wears here. So now Destiny's doing that. She basically says the additional income stream provides peace of mind and allows her to live the type of life that she wants. It's 
you know, usually nine to five, that's 40 hours a week. You're making 60 grand. Kudos to you. You side, you start a side hustle. Maybe that's an extra 10, 20 grand a year. Boom. That cumulative effect. Now three years in, maybe you're ne- making an extra 50 grand. Maybe five years in, you're making a hundred grand. You quit your job. You focus on that full time. The side hustle becomes the full time job. That's how it is. That's just basic math. So basically what I'm saying is plan B is pretty helpful in the workforce and also in the bedroom. Um, <laughs> anyway, so that's destiny. Have a plan B. If you were going to start a side hustle, side hustle, David, mm-hmm. I know you're a great musician. Have Thank you ever you. thought about what side hustle you would start? For the record, this right here is my side hustle. Yeah. I worked in finance, insurance sales for 15 years. You know, five years ago, I was like, holy shit, I got a lot of money. I can yeah. do what I want to do. I've been working remote before people even knew what working remote was. And that's why I started a little YouTube, Instagram show that has basically turned into this at Valuetainment. So you can't look in the short term for a side hustle, you know, for for longevity, for for money making. It's more of like eventually this will be something. Right. Maybe not a year, maybe not two years, maybe not five years, but eventually it'll be something. And look at us now here on Valuetainment on the Sizecast. So that's was my side hustle. And I still have my full time job. Exactly, right. Still yeah. doing my financial sales. Uh, like everyone's like, who's the guy I was on the phone with all the time? People <laughs> wheeling and dealing. David, to you, what's your side hustle? If you were going to have a side hustle. I mean, man, that's, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I like uh, I like writing content. I like doing this. Um, I think if I have, uh, like, our, our boy Marcelo, who helps mm-hmm. write for the Sawscast. Shout out he to He has Marcelo. a lot of different little clients and side hustles he's he does. A, he's got a puzzle galore. Yeah, exactly. So doing something like that where, you know, you stick with the talent and you, mm-hmm. you help them write, I think it's Okay, so you've thought about this. Yeah, okay. yeah, absolutely. Well, listen, don't quit your day job. Stay here for a little while, buddy. We need you. But, you know, have a plan. No, day. absolutely. I mean, a side hustle, yeah. Um, number three, uh, in the cases of the ordinary people flipping the script and leveling up, uh, number three is... You could always reinvent yourself. Here's a story of 38-year-old J.D. Wilson, who was still learning how to budget. Imagine if he learned that when he was in his 20s. Mm. He'd be a billionaire like David. Amen. So this guy, J.D. Wilson, he shut down his events company during uh, COVID. He sold off most of his stuff, and he moved from New Jersey, where Gerard's from, to Hawaii to teach third grade. Ooh. Full disclosure, I taught second grade my, first, my last job before... Um, Starting my financial job. Rewarding, amazing, awesome, loved it. Would never work for that kind of pay again in my life. Anyway, (laughs) Hawaii is definitely more expensive than New Jersey, but not by much. Um, But this guy, Wilson, because he's learning how to budget, is making it work. So basically, he's saying that aside from his rent, groceries, and student loan payments, the inevitable student loan payment, he doesn't spend on much else. He's basically embracing that minimalist lifestyle. Minimalist. I'm kind of a minimalist. I'm not a... I'm definitely the oldest millennial, and yeah. I'm definitely kind of of a, a minimalist. I don't, you know, I could afford a Rolex. I don't buy one. I could afford a car. I Uber everywhere. You got to do things different. Like our friends, the Akrans, that, uh, yeah. you know, go around in, a, in an RV. So this guy's got his uh, um, minimalist lifestyle going on right there. Uh, but basically, he loves his new community in Hawaii, this guy's story, and he's basically figured out what he wants for the rest of his life. Basically, the goal is this. You can't be afraid to switch it up. You might be someone watching this in New Jersey, hating your job, not sure what's going on. Next thing you know, you're living in Hawaii, having some fun in the sun, doing luau's with hot chicks. <laughs> it's just like that. It just is. like that. It changed. You're teaching third grade. Next thing you know, you beat a kindergartner teacher. The two of you are raising two little tykes living around in Hawaii. Good for you guys. Man, invite me to the wedding. Boom. There it is. Blink of an eye. Blink of an eye. Uh, number four we talk about here uh, is you need to invest in yourself. You're, the, the best investment you could ever make in your life is in yourself, David. You know this. So there's yeah. a story about when COVID hit New York City in uh, March of 2020, when this godforsaken pandemic that never ceases to end um, <clears throat> began. Emma Sadler, she lost her job as a restaurant manager, and she said, I'm getting out of the industry completely. So she invested in herself. She decided to take a three-month User experience oh. boot camp course that cost her 12 G's. Talk about an investment oh, in yourself. Oh, my God. Right? So she had saved up some money. She was probably collecting unemployment, wink, wink, collecting stimulus checks, another wink, wink. And she invested that 12 grand rather than into Gucci or Louis purses or traveling. She invested into a course, a three month user experience boot camp course that basically helped her secure a job in a totally different 
field. Now she earns 60 grand a year as a designer with the potential to take home six figures as she moves up the proverbial corporate ladder. So you, David, you me are your best investment. Oh, absolutely. You're your best yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that you spend a lot of money grooming your mustache. It's a big deal for you, that mustache. <laughs> you've got gels. You've got creams. You've got lotions. Oils, you invest all sorts of things. in yourself. Yeah. It's a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. I'm looked- actually 85 years old. I invest a lot in skin creams and regimens Boom. to make me look younger. But, look at that. you know. We'll do what we can do. I see Lewis Alpha here going ham in the comment section. Good Always for you, does, buddy. Yeah. Um, and last but not least, number five, and this is a very ironic on a money show. Sazcast, save that money. All we talk is money. But number five is money isn't everything. What, 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 what? <laughs> yeah. So this dude, Jason Lee, believed that earning six figures would prove that he was a success. This was something that he had ingrained into his mentality From a young child, you make six figures, you're a success. But basically, he graduated college, got a consulting gig that paid him a hundred grand, and you know what, David? He hated it, and he hated his life. But he loved all that. He loved a hundred grand, but he hated his job. So he leaves the consulting gig and he launches a nonprofit with his brother. All right, you're working with your brother, but you know what they say about nonprofits? They don't make. You don't make a profit. That's the problem. But now he makes decent money. I don't know what decent is, but not six figures anymore. But he says the fulfillment he finds in his work is well worth the pay cut. I get that. You know, they say, love what you do. You'll never work a day in your life. All right? Yeah. Uh, you hate what you do. You're going to hate your life. Yeah. Okay? So if it's just for the money, it's maybe probably not going to last too long. Right? So you ever worked at a job, you're just like, dude, I can't freaking do this anymore. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm miserable here. No matter what, the, if the money was good or bad, whatever, you just can't do it anymore. Right. But, yeah, I also think it's what you make of it. Like, for instance, life settlements wasn't something you love to Zero do. Zero clue, but but uh, there's parts of the, my business I like. I like negotiating. Right. I like dealing with people. I like networking. I like salesmanship. But, exactly. So I like, these are- and I like providing value to the customer. The reason that I'm successful in my business is I'm on a referral-based business. You would not believe how many people call me up and they're like, hey, Adam, this is Bill McGee. I got your number from a friend of my financial advisor, uh, Joe Sally. He says that you're the best. I'm like, he's lying to you, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> but it's constant referrals, and I like that. I like that part of the business, and I like the money that I make. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if I hated talking with people and interacting with yeah. people and doing deals, I would have left the business a long time ago. It's not I'm- like I wake up every day and be like, I love life insurance, but it's a means to an end. Yeah, but I, in a sense, it's like you applied yourself to this, and yes. you got good at it, and yes. you started liking it. Yes. Because your give-a-shit level was pretty the high. give-a-shit level. Theme of the Sazcast, give-a-shit level. if you, for some reason, just didn't give a shit about it. Clearly. But you're good at all. You just, yes. It's like you're never going to get to that point of liking it if you don't yeah. give a shit about it. Sometimes well, you have to try. it's the risk and reward. The risk and reward. Yeah. The rewards actually make very good money. Yeah. You know, the risk is, you know, the annoying stuff is I did do cold calling for years and grind and sales and dealing with annoying people that I don't want to talk to or whatever, but it's worth it. Yeah. I mean, it, sometimes you have to just push through the suck. Like yes. Gerard says, embrace the suck for a little bit. It gets better. Kind of the whole point. Yeah. Right? Yeah, so, exactly. So, yeah. What's the point here of this uh, of this episode? Here are five people, everyday people. We just talked about Jeff Bezos and Pitbull and Drake and Meek Mill and my girl Dio Lipa. And we flipped it. Now we're talking about five normal people who are basically reinventing their life yeah. and changing what they were doing. You're unhappy. You you got a hundred grand of student uh, loan, uh, student debt to pay. You're living in an RV. Good for you, the Akbans. You uh, you're not happy with your job or you're not feeling fulfilled. Boom, you start a YouTube consulting business, side hustle. You're you're not happy in New Jersey. You moved to freaking Hawaii. You're teaching elementary school. Good for you. Now you're hanging out with the kids. You wanna you know. You lose your job, you invest 12 grand that you get from the government or you had saved up, whatever, boom, now you got a new career. Or if you, even if you're making money and you're miserable, you work in a career that you actually love and you're fulfilled even if you're making less. Yeah. But these are five people, everyday people, that flip the script. I love the phrase flip the script. Yeah. It's because it's like you're going a certain direction. You're not happy with it. Flip that script. Flip that script, bro. Flip that script. But you got to have the courage to flip that yeah. script. A lot of people are just uh, 
They scared to flip it. Yeah, they're like, you know what? I, it's just I don't I can't move I can't move out of my house and move into an RV. What am I crazy? Flip it's the risk script, reward, bro. bro. It's risk reward. We have faith. a friend here, and I told him, "Hey, man, you got to flip the script." Uh, there's a who certain, is it? Say certain, his... certain person who's in the corner office over there, oh, corner okay. office, you know, yeah. and he was kind of friends in a friend zone situation with the with a lady. Okay, and I was like, "Look, bro, flip. you're like one date away from getting friend zoned completely. You never a good situation. Yeah, you know what you got to do." Flip you gotta flip that, that script. Flip that script. There's a studio flip audience. Flip that <laughs> script. <laughs> I've flipped over the table right now, and he flipped the script. He told her, "Look, here's how I feel. Here's what I want to do." He went in for a kiss, whatever. Ooh. She kissed him back. Bingo, oh. bango. Now they're dating six months. Boom, boom, Who boom. knows what's gonna happen? You got a little flip diaper, the script, little cupid wings. But the time, the 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 time that I told him to flip the script, and like the, the next day. And like even that date, do you know how like the risk reward? Like do you know how like weird he felt? He's gonna you know he's got about the friends. Oh know. my god, yeah. But now he's dating the girl. Good for him. Same story for all these five people right here. They're miserable in their jobs. They don't like going. They don't want to be there. They're not like where they're living. They don't. Want, they want to flip the script. They did it. Most people are too scared to flip the script. So to our friends in the audience right now, commenting, I see you listening. Respect, love you. What do you need to do to flip the script? What's going on in your world that you're like, I don't know, man. Kind of don't want to be in this job anymore. I kind of want to change things. I kind of want to date that person, but I'm kind of scared. I don't know. Flip the script. Yeah, right? absolutely. Pat says this, like the worst thing to, to be an 80-year-old person looking down on, you know, in your life and just to be filled with I regret. regret. What if I would have done this? I should have done that. Why didn't I? I should have flipped the script. I should have listened to freaking Saws on the Saws cast remember. and flipped that script. David, let me hear your old person flip the script. Back in my day, Saws Nick told me to flip the script. <laughs> and I didn't. And I didn't. And now, now I'm an me. old man. So the bottom line is you're not stuck in your situation. Make that change if you feel like you need to make the change. And flip that Script. Bingo. We have um, some New Year's resolutions here. Oh, let's hear some New Year's <clears throat> resolutions. We got Rocco P. Co. says he wants to buy more silver. Uh, the Josh Hart 90 says he wants to find a mentor. Uh, become a trainer from Watts Entrepreneur. Uh, George or Jorge Sar says save that money. Oh, I like that one. Uh, do a bodybuilding competition, maybe work or volunteer for Valuetainment. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, info at Valuetainment.com. Learn a new skill that can help me become a freelancer. So we got a lot of um, hardworking individuals in the chat, no surprise there. And they have big ambitions. I like it. I like it a lot. Thank you for covering that. And I hope you guys follow through with all your New Year's resolutions. May this <clears throat> not be a typical year where you make a resolution, don't follow through, and then next year you're like, I really want to do this or that. It just right. doesn't happen. Young John in the comments, sorry. Uh, Young John, I like goes, that guy. Flip the script, a.k.a. grow a pair. You hear me? I hear you, bro. <laughs> I hear you. Um, so uh, flip that script. Make a change in your life. Uh, save that money, invest that money, and become a millionaire, they may say. Yeah. Uh, speaking of millionaires, here's a nice little segment right now that I'd like to cover uh, right now regarding millionaires. So now most people know what they got to do to become a millionaire, but some people need to learn what not to do. Oh. So here are five reasons you will never become a millionaire. Number one, you confuse high income with being wealthy. Number two, you don't know the difference between saving and investing. Number three, you too fancy and you spend all your money on cars, clothes, and jewelry. Number four, you make unhealthy lifestyle choices, a.k.a. you gross. And number five, <laughs> you hate your job or you're in the wrong career field. So let's, get, let's do a deep dive into these five things and hopefully you will learn what not to do, young David and young John and young Luis Alpha making the comments. Respect. So again, here's what not to do if you want to become a millionaire or the reasons you will not become a millionaire. So number one, you confuse high income with being wealthy. Let's touch on that. So there's a lot of people out there that make a lot of money, but somehow they have no money or they're drowning in debt. We've covered two major stories here on the Sazcast that 40% of Americans making 100 grand or more are living paycheck to paycheck. And then when it comes to millennials, 60% of millennials who make 100 grand or more are living Paycheck to paycheck. How in the hell yeah. do you make a hundred grand or more and live paycheck to paycheck? It's called 
you're spending more than you make, a.k.a. your your defense is worse than your offense. We talk about this analogy yeah. a lot, like athletes or whatever. Um, why do athletes go broke? They make millions a year. It's because they make great offense, a.k.a. make that money, but their defense is horrible, a.k.a. cars, clothes, jewelry, cribs, chicks, babies, mamas, whatever you want to call it, party and clubs, popping bottles. They're making good offense. They got no defense. Right. Okay? So it comes down to spending more than you make. So if you're confusing high income, I make 100 grand a year. I make 200 grand a year, but you're spending 225 grand a year and you think that the good time I'm always going to make that kind of money. I'm ne- nothing's ever going to happen that I'm not going to make this kind of money. Yeah. We've seen what's happened uh, this year. People have been laid off, people COVID, out of your job, who knows, career change, right? Uh inflation, yeah. everything's happened. The good times can't last forever. Okay? So if you're making good money, just understand that that might not always be that way. And just because you make 100 grand a year or 250 grand a year or even a million bucks a year, just because you have high income does not mean that you're quote unquote wealthy. The real test of wealth is your net worth. I love hearing the stories of this guy was a janitor and made 50 grand a year or 25 grand a year for 50 years and he retired with $2.5 million in the bank. And they say, like, you ever read the story, um, uh, The Millionaire Next Door? They say the most common car for a millionaire to drive you're thinking well like a porsche or mercedes you yeah. know luxury <clears throat> vehicle it's a used buick <laughs> why does it have to be used i'm just saying <laughs> like it's a used buick because they've had it yeah. for a while and they're not trying to keep up with the joneses right and you know it's called the millionaire next door because you would assume that the, the you know the lawyer you know the you know with a fancy law degree is, is the millionaire next door or the doctor well a lot of those times they're taking out crazy student debt and if you went to school until you're literally 30, yeah. and you've never had money in your life, and now you start making a quarter million bucks a year, you're going to have a nice house, you're going to have a nice car, you're going to buy the nicer things in life, and then each paycheck is just going for your lifestyle. Versus the guy who's just like, I own a lawn care business. I drive a shitty truck that I put all my lawn equipment yeah. in, but I got five guys that work for me, and each day we make you know, a thousand bucks doing lawns and, you know, times that by 365 days, I make 365 grand a year, you know, that's gross. And then I got income, you know, uh, people to pay, whatever. I'm pulling home six figures and I do that every year and I'm not trying to keep up with the Joneses. And then boom, you're the millionaire next door and you're driving a uh, used Buick or your used truck in your lawn care business, AKA don't confuse high income with being wealthy. That's number one. Number two and this is very something that I know about, talk about, is you don't know the difference between saving and investing. There is a difference. What's the difference? Saving is short term. The next one, two, three years. Okay, that's money that you need to pay rent. You need to pay bills, emergency funds, six to 12 months emergency fund. Investing, long term. All right? Long term growth, compound interest, the eighth wonder of the world. Cash, safety, comfort. You're good. I'm not going to be homeless this year, okay? Investing is growth, compound interest that we talk about, long-term investing, buy and hold strategy. So again, if you're all cash and you don't invest, we see what's going on with inflation these days. Inflation has just hit 7%, I believe. Yeah. You know, you're losing money in the bank. But if you don't have enough cash on the sidelines and you can't start investing, then you're losing to inflation. It's a slippery slope right now. Investing, compound interest, bro. You, you, one thing I always say is you can't save your way to becoming a millionaire. You can save your way to becoming a thousandaire, but you can't save your way to becoming a millionaire right. because you need to invest. You need to have a 401k. You need to get that match. You need to have a Roth IRA and tax deferral or, or you know, no tax at the end with the Roth IRA or whatever it is. And then a brokerage account, compound interest. Like you need to have investments. Yeah. Boom, there it is. So understand the difference between saving and investing. Uh, number three reason why you will not become a millionaire is just you just too fancy. You know the song by Drake? Oh, you fancy, huh? Yeah. You fancy, huh? Yeah. Uh, hair done, skin done, everything done. You know? Yeah, I said Oh, yeah. you fancy, huh? <laughs> I, I, I believe another word for fancy is... Bougie. Bougie. What's that one quote by that one singer? Patton Bougie? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. No, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing the bougie. <laughs> I'm a savage. Uh-huh. <laughs> Sassy, Sassy, moody, bo- oh, yeah. bougie. Is it bougie? I don't even know, I don't even know anymore. Anyway, save that money. Um, so something that we pointed out: nobody will care that you had a nice car if you're broke. Okay, 
Because right. you've spent all your money. Well, I did drive a Porsche four years ago. Nobody gives a shit, bro. You broke it. <laughs> okay? Right. Um, you know, balling out at the mall, credit cards, being a foodie and having a fancy palate. Girl. Not be willing to go to a sushi china buffet. Girl. Because you too <laughs> fancy, David. Girl. You know about that, girl. Girl, preach. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Shout out to Nancy right there. But anyways, you too fancy. You're spending all your money on cars, clothes, Mm -mm. jewelry, and fancy food. Uh -uh. Cars, clothes, jewelry, (laughs) cars, clothes, jewelry, jewelry, cars, clothes. You're spending on all those toys. You're going to be a broke as a joke. That's how it is. So um, if you too fancy... Uh, go sleep on someone's couch one time just to, <laughs> just, to, just to see what it's like to be a normal person again. Yeah. Um, number four, one of the reasons that you will not become a millionaire is you make unhealthy lifestyle choices, a.k.a. you gross. You stanky. You sloppy. You stanky. You nasty. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, a savage. I'm a savage. Yeah. Mm. Uh, get a checkup. See yeah. a doctor. Eat your veggies. <laughs> Don't go to McDonald's, you have right? have worms in your Exercise. stool, bro. <laughs> Exercise. Sweat it out. Do something out of the ordinary and live your best life. Do you know who lives the longest in the world? Wealthy Elephants. people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wealthy people. Why? Because they take care of themselves. They can afford trainers. They can afford to see good doctors. They live a little bit longer. They can have procedures. They tend to live a little bit longer than most people. Yeah. So if you're making unhealthy lifestyle choices... Stop being so that gross. was just a basic. I think they got lazy on that one. They might have, but <laughs> it's not everything. You won't be a millionaire. You uh, might die. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you gross. You don't do so. You just stanky. <laughs> um, this is what they're talking about Jesus. right here. This is um, it's important stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, number five, which we talked about at the, the the top of the the segment, is that. You might be in the wrong career field, Ooh. a.k.a. you hate your job. You hate showing up to work every day. Uh, millionaires are at least passionate about what they do, or at the very least, what we talked about with my job, they at least like it. Yeah. Like it enough to stick it out and, what is it, embrace the suck. Embrace the and suck. Stick it yeah. out, and next thing you know, you're just collecting commission checks because you're alive. So, But if you wake up every single day and you're like, F my life. I hate everyone I work with. I hate my boss. I hate Mark and accounting. I hate Jennifer and sales. I hate them all. Get the f- out of the office. Leave that job. Find something you like. Okay? <laughs> uh, if you despise your job, it will show. Yeah. We have had some people here that may or may not have liked their job, and they were miserable. They didn't like what they were doing. They didn't like their role. They didn't like situations. Uh, certain things aren't going to change in your company, so you might need to be the person to change or peace out, leave, goodbye. Um, But these are five things not to do, but five things not to do if you actually want to become a millionaire. Yeah. Yeah? You gave me a little puppy dog look right there. What was that? You kind of said the same thing. So go and not (laughs) do that. Yeah. These are things to avoid. These are things to avoid. Yeah. Exactly. Don't be stinky. That's the, I, that one should be number one. That's what we've done our networking when we talk about the seven keys to networking. Don't be gross. I, I've never met a stinky millionaire, and I've met five of them. <laughs> I've met five. <laughs> of them. They, they tend to take the, care of themselves a little bit better than yeah. most. So um, that is that. And um, is, there, is that your favorite one? Don't be stinky? I think that's the funniest one. That's, of course. The, you asked, why would they throw that in there? Because I wanted to throw that in there. <laughs> Don't be stinky. Yeah. That might not even been one of them. I said, we're not going to get this stank thing going on right now. Okay. This is just a a hint at me. Anyway, you know, you know, uh, um, transition time, you know, uh, we talk about stanky. You know, if you want to date somebody, you can't be stanky. Yeah, that's You got to look good. You got to, you got to look your best. Now, David, are you familiar with the concept of hypergamy? Uh, Hypergamy is the concept of dating up or dating out of your league. Usually it's associated with gold diggers who date rich guys. But now, today, nobody, and I mean nobody, is dating up more than this guy, Pete Davidson. Girl. This guy's dated Ariana Grande, Kate Beckinsale, and now he's dating Kim K. By the way, Pete is worth $8 million. Kim K is worth $1.2 billion. So to all you skinny, tatted up, funny-looking, weird dudes out there, shoot for the stars, because there's hope for you. Anything can happen if Pete Davidson is now dating Kim K and he had just dated Ariana Grande. I don't get it. I've said it. I don't understand it. But this is something called hypergamy. Now I said the reason I saw this story. This you see this you see this book right here? 
This is an interesting book right here. This is called Dating Up, The Hypergamy Factor. Um, so we're going to do a little lesson on what this hypergamy Oro -ro. actually means. This guy Is this like a guide on how to do it? Uh, I haven't read it yet. I saw the book. I saw the story. I said, bingo. I've been wondering what the hell Pete Davidson's got going on. Dude. Maybe he's got a 12-pound yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, package guys. going on down there. <laughs> but homie is killing the hypergamy game. Okay, so just a little context right here to our friends at home. And like, let's just say, like, he's ugly. I won't say he's ugly. I would just say he's not so good looking in the face. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know one girl who dated a guy just because of his like personality, he, and she right. didn't think that he no, was that good. No, that's hilarious, but let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know that guy, do no, you? No, Schmavid. Yeah, Schmavid. Right. <laughs> so look, so this article, basically this is something we're going to talk about. This is from Men's Health, by the way. Uh, what a! <laughs> I'm sorry, Young John. What's Young John talking about? Pete knows. I can't even say it. How to put? How to put that? How to? How to what? How to put the I Mac down on I them? I see it. I see it. <laughs> Um, so this is hypergamy, and this is what this article says, and this is what this book that I'm going to read and understand is a little bit about. And if you guys out there want to get better with the ladies, or if you ladies want to date a baller, maybe you listen up a little bit and understand the concept of hypergamy. And maybe just kind of follow what Pete Davidson's doing, because the guy clearly doesn't uh, have a lot of attractive qualities that most of us can understand. I, I think he's the, probably the least funniest cast member on SNL. I said it. Ooh, shots fired. Shots fired. Um, you know, so I think it's pretty clear. Most of us want somebody who's smart, funny, attractive. This is on this SNL. Is, this is, uh, on SNL, this is pretty obvious, right? Um, but some folks, you know, implement this hypergamy thing, which is the actively seeking out Parker partners of a higher socioeconomic or social class. You know, i.e., partners who are rich and powerful. Okay, so let me just you know take a little history lesson right now. This is something that's been ingrained in our DNA for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. This isn't something that freaking Pete Davidson invented, right? Right, or flipped a script and now he, Ooh. you know, because it's usually the women that do this. So basically, yeah. thousands of years ago, women wanted a man, you know, a caveman potentially at that point, who had more land or had a a their own watering hole or had resources to raise a family or raise a children. All right, but this isn't thousand years ago right now. So today. It now revolves around marrying somebody or dating somebody who makes more money than you. Yes, money is at the heart Yeesh. of this because money equals protection, equals safety, equals yeah. you know nicer trips, luxury, yeah. luxuries, you know taking yeah. care yeah. of yourself, Freedom. health care, better food, aka you know gold digger mentality. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. I ain't saying she a gold digger, but she ain't messing with. Pete Davidson. Um, <laughs> but is. money isn't, these days, money isn't the only way to achieve these things these days. These days, with social media, you have something known as clout or social clout, a.k.a. you're a higher class or you have a higher status. I have three million followers on Instagram, so we need to bang right now. Right now. That just happened right there. Do you not see the blue check mark? <laughs> Do you not see it? Um, so that's, you know, that you know, I, I'm not... Knocking women, but that's just traditional stuff. Now, speaking of men, yeah, um, you know, men want typically a woman who they find attractive. This is not again anything new. This is evolutionary right now. Okay, sure. so men, you know, they what do they associate with attractiveness? Health, youth, beauty, yeah. fertility, okay. right? Yeah, thousands and thousands of years of this. They for want sure. the young, the young virgin ripe. that they can ripe. Ugh. She's ripe for the picking. I will now take this. Prima Nocta. I will initiate Prima Nocta. <laughs> Give yourself to me. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, so men, you know, speaking of hypergamy, you know, the concept of dating up and, yeah. um, you know, above your social status, a.k.a. gold diggers, what girls do. Men, because of attractiveness, they're actually willing to date down or marry down in social class uh -huh. for someone with superior looks. With plump. Press. Yes, <laughs> you said it, not I. Uh, um, but this is the concept of hypergamy, <laughs> and now Pete Davidson is playing this game dating, you know, some of the most beautiful, famous celebrity women in the world, and everyone's like, how is this happening? And I feel like he's asking the same thing. He's just, it's just like happening to him. He's, he's like, just like if you're out on the craps table and you're like, boom, seven. Whoa, okay, I'll go roll again. Seven, what? And it's, he just happens to like just walk into it. It's just like, oh, okay, yeah. the seat's available. I guess I'll sit here. Yeah, yeah. I, I've asked multiple women about this. I don't understand it. If you well, guys have an answer in the comment section of as to why Pete David is pulling some of the nicest tail in the world, 
Please let us well, know. Well, Adam, do us all a favor. You have some connections to the Kardashian family. I People do. that don't know, you were almost a Kardashian with yes. some. Anyways, see what you can do, what strings you can pull, and let's just ask her. <laughs> hey, just between friends. Yes. My up? friend uh, did mar- marry, date, marry yeah. Kim Kardashian. Yeah. I was in the wedding. You were in and, the wedding. But, okay, so something you should know about Chris is he's 6'9. Yeah. He's a multi, multi, multi millionaire. He played in the NBA. He's a freaking stud. Right. Um, okay, nobody was like, why would you date him? They're like, no, I get it. He's half black. So that's kind of you is? know, her thing. Oh, Chris. Yeah. Pete's not even 1% black. Just a weird looking dude from Stat Island. Just doesn't make sense, is all I'm saying. He reminds okay? me of like Millhouse in The Simpsons. Millhouse, wow. <laughs> yeah, I think he's like, he, okay, FG says he's hung like a horse. So maybe that's what it is. <laughs> uh, it has to be. Pete Reed, uh, Young John says Pete reads books on seducing women. Clearly. I didn't know the guy could read, but the guy's clearly doing something. Lily's saying, let's go out of You know thanks, what it respect. is? It's the, it's the sympathy sex. It's like, my dad died at 9 11. Bang me. Oh, damn. He's busting out Do you the think, 9-11 I think card. So. My dad died at 9 <laughs> Yeah. Oh, my God. Anyway, the puppy. I saw this book. I had to understand it. I saw this article about Pete Davidson, hypergamy, and I said, we're covering this today on the Sazcast. So, But listen, you know, in today's world, today's society, it's not like thousands of years ago when women needed a man to survive. Women are making just as much money in the workforce as men, if not more. Yeah. Women are crushing it. Shout out to the women out there. All okay. the single ladies. All the single ladies. Hey, hey. So you know, it's not that that it's not that whole thing. I think I would like to think these days, most people. You know, sometimes I say most people is a, most people are looking for love, companionship, friendship, to have a good time, a partner they can you know grow with, trust, uh, laugh, quality, all that good stuff that comes with relationship. I would like to think that money and status are important, but secondary. I don't know. What are your mm, thoughts? I think for simpleton, a simpleton like myself, uh, yeah, money, it's like, I'm not, I don't know, at this level of, of life and the game of life, I think, yeah, money is secondary. Uh, but it definitely, like, in that weird celebrity world, it's definitely all about status. And, like, mm-hmm. Pete Davidson was, you know, part of our crew, I don't think, and he ran into Ariana, Ariana Grande or Kim Kardashian, they fucking wouldn't look twice at him. But it's like, it's Pete Davidson, he's got some sort of pull, clout, SNL. and he must be a goddamn fucking sweetheart, or I don't know what it is. Because yeah. I, cause I like, genuinely, like, what is it? Like, what is he saying to these women? You know, there's like mysteries that'll never be solved, untold, uh, unsolved mysteries. This might be the number one. Yeah. This is very... Uh, Someone's got to... I got to get to the bottom of this. We will. We will. You know, one of the things I love asking women in South Beach, where I live, is I say hypothetical well, hold on. question. Also, what's the age difference there? Kim Kardashian. Uh, she's definitely 41 years of age. And I want to say he's in his late 20s. Those are, those are my numbers. I'm sticking to She's 41. Huh? Yep. Go ahead. Pete Davidson... Pete Davidson is 28 years old. I, so I nailed it on the... Uh, nailed you it. nailed it. You nailed it. Yeah. So you know who else nailed it? Pete Davidson. <laughs> <laughs> he did indeed. Shout out to you, buddy. I mean, it does sound like I'm hating. I'm not. I'm. I'm, I'm just curious. I'm just like I don't get it, and I just need an answer. I think a lot of people are thinking that. Yeah. Way. Um, like, what does he have that I don't? There's a lot. <laughs> um, but I was gonna say I love asking women. Speaking of hypergamy and dating and social status and all that kind of stuff, I love asking. I mean, you can ask these questions anywhere. Feel free to take this and. Ask it to uh, any of your friends out there. But I love asking women this question. Ladies, would you rather, would you rather date a very wealthy, multimillionaire billionaire who takes care of you? You never have to work. You're living the good life. You're in the mansion. You're driving. You're eating. You're doing the best things that you want in life. You're shopping. You have the time of life. The only problem is with this, this guy is gross. He's not so good looking. It's not exactly someone you're attracted to. Or... Would you rather date the hottest, coolest, sexiest, most fun dude ever? Sex great, all that fun stuff, but he's broke as shit and he lives in his mom's basement. Those are your two options. What would you pick? So it's rich but ugly or poor but funny and... No. Yes. Rich yes. and ugly yes. or poor but sexy. Yes. Okay. I'd like to know what... I mean, there is as a, a guy... a handful of uh, Hollywood women that uh, pick the former. Rich and ugly. <laughs> well, Pete I'll, Davidson. Not, not, most women, I yeah. think. I think more than anything. You think most women pick rich and ugly? Yes. 
Yes, because huh. women, at the end of the day, they want to feel protected. They want to have security. They want to live a good life. They don't want to struggle. How I don't care how much you like a guy. If you're stuck living in homie's mom's basement, should, should I'm not call, saying. Should we call Nancy Tran? See her. <laughs> Anyway, that's something, that's a question that I ask ladies. I love getting their response. Because if I ask that exact same thing to a guy. Yeah. Okay. And I said, gentlemen, would you rather date a woman who's super successful and wealthy and comes from a great family and has tons of money and has yachts and boats and does whatever you want? The problem is she's disgusting and gross and sloppy and fat. Okay. (laughs) Or would you rather date a gorgeous girl She's fun. You love hanging out with her, and you just have a great time together, and she's beautiful and adorable, and you have great sex. The problem is she's broke and doesn't have a job. Well, that's Every no. guy would be like, just give me the hot broke chick. I'll figure it out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Every but guy. You added something else to that where it was uh, hot and broke, but also, like, doesn't do anything. Like, doesn't do anything to try to improve herself. She just yeah. kind of, like, lounges. Oh, yeah, that's, that's it. That's the thing. It's like, okay, she's cute. She's fun to look at. She's not fucking doing anything. She just sits yeah. there. Like, do something. Like I'm, I'm doing everything. Do you, what? Kind of part time at Starbucks. I'm not do something. I'm hot. <laughs> oh, hot. I'm dope. I'm dope. I'm just sick. What would I do? Though? Anyway, these are questions. These are such <laughs> hypothetical questions. But this is the hypergamy game. We're figuring it out. We're cracking the code. <laughs> Pete Davidson. When you come on the show, we'll ask you these hard hitting questions. Um, uh, gorgeous yeah. and broke. What? So uh, rich and uh, sloppy. So go ahead, answer it for us. Answer it for us. Well, just based on my track record and dating, I've clearly taken the young, Rich and ugly. hot, oh. <laughs> broke girl. Okay? Yeah, not broke. But there, I wouldn't date a loser. Like, I wouldn't date. Like, I would never work. Like, I would want my girlfriend, wife to work. Okay, well, that's, that's the whole question. Yeah, I get it. So, so you're saying rich and ugly, then? I, I think at the end of the day, you want to be attracted to the person that you're with. You know, Physically the or, game, like, mentally? Everything. But, uh, right, so I don't know. I think I'd rather get the hardworking, ugly chick that, like, I know at the end mm-hmm. of the day, like, when shit hits the fan, like, we got each other, mm-hmm. than, like, hey, babes, yeah, I get it, you're pretty, but, like, we need to pay rent. <laughs> <laughs> go work that block, girl. Yeah, go- <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, anyway, speaking of working that block, let's get to this next story, because it's a great transition. You want to pull this one up? Yeah. So this has to do oh, this with is excellent. sugar babies. This oh. is the- I-, I-, I saw this story... I saw the hypergamy thing. The Pete Davidson thing is in the news. Um, you know, we covered Jeff Bezos and his girlfriend, whatever. And then I saw this story about sugar babies. I said, throw it in there. Yeah. So here's the deal, David. Kay. Do you know what sugar babies have to do to make money? There are sh- These are sugar baby confessions. A brutally honest peek behind the curtain into the world of transactional dating. Now, according to Urban Dictionary, a very... Um, Reputable source. They say a sugar baby is a young lady who is financially pampered and cared for by a sugar daddy in exchange for companionship. One sugar baby said transactional arrangements are very straightforward and all the cards are on the table. Well, technically, the man's credit card is on the table. But um, bum. Hey, yo. Hey, yo. So this is what sugar babies do. They um, are financially pampered and cared for by these uh, richer Daddies, yeah, as they or like mommies. to say, or mommies, yeah. I'm a, I'm a sugar baby. <laughs> yeah, I'll go out and sit. You, you, you're getting taken care of by yep. someone, Kim K. <laughs> yeah, Kim K. There it is. Thanks, Kim. Thanks, uh, Pete. So here are a couple stories uh, from sugar baby confessions Ooh. that we're talking about right now. Like the one lady who said, technically, the man's card is on the table, but she does like it because it's straightforward and transactional. It's a business relationship. Next girl says, "I'm a professional sugar baby." And I have seven seven different simultaneous sugar daddies That's right so now. <laughs> oh, huh. no. I love learning about all the different professions, okay. i.e. doctor, lawyer, Ooh. Hollywood director, and investment banker. So she's shooting for the stars Just over Google here. Just Google that. You have to- and she's trying out new hobbies, i.e. golf, oh. sailing, fly fishing, etc. <laughs> all from a, of a diverse collection of daddies. All right. All right, all right. All right, all right. So she says it opened up my world to many new experiences, cultures, and ways of life. Good for you, sugar baby number two. Um, Number three. Our next contestant. Our next contestant (laughs) for sugar baby uh, of the year. She says, when I was 19, I had a sugar daddy. Okay. Okay. I was in college and needed to pay loans. I hear you, girl. This man, who was like 68 or something, she says, had reached out to me. 
and I jokingly replied, I am now 32, and we are married. Oh, boom. This is like a complete uh, Anna Nicole Smith situation gotten that written all over it. Talk about transactional? Yeah. So when she was 19, he was 68. Okay. Girl. So now That guy's like a... Duh. Okay, exactly. So now she's 32, so that's a, what? 13 years difference. That's 19, that's 20. That's, thir- that's 13 years difference. He was 68, so he's... Oh, Am I doing this right? No, 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 no. Yes, no, no, he's no. 68. She's okay, so she's 31 now. How old is she? 32. He's 81 now. She's Holy 32 hell. and he's 81. 19 yeah, plus 13. Yeah. That's 32. Boom. 68 plus 13. Yep. That's, okay. That's, yeah, that's 81. Exactly. So she's 32, 81. She's dating Anthony Fauci. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. Remember Anna Nicole Smith? Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, pretty that's, much that. That's exactly what's going Waiting on. Waiting for him to die. Um, anyway, that's sugar baby number three. Talk about playing the long game. At the end of this, you tell me which sugar baby you would prefer. (laughs) The Um, new Cosmo article. Number four says, I'm currently working as a sugar baby. Hell yeah. To help with college, much like sugar baby number three. That money. Some experiences haven't been so good. With the men I was just, uh, the men I work with, I was, were pushing boundaries and doing things that they didn't have permission to do. Girl. And so on. And some of it also isn't so bad. Uh, sugar baby number four, you be careful out there. You be careful out there. Uh, don't do anything that you don't want to do. Yeah. Uh, you are well within your sugar baby rights to leave that sugar daddy and find a better sugar daddy for your own. Yeah. Don't do anything weird. Exactly. Get out of that. Anyway, this 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 has all started with this hypergamy so, uh, story, the act of dating up. Yeah. Uh, now we're talking about sugar babies dating wealthy sugar daddies. Sugar baby number five, this is the last one. She says, I had a thing with a guy in his late 50s when I was in my early 30s. It lasted a few years. He paid for everything. Fancy dinners, As luxury hotels, do. designer clothes, the whole thing. I honestly had a blast. And the kicker was it was the absolute best sex of my life. Good oh. for you, sugar baby <laughs> number five. Talk about that sugar. Talk about that sugar. You know what, lady? Uh, he did. Pay for everything because that's kind of the whole point. Uh, that's of what I was gonna say. Daddy. I would hope so. Shockingly, he paid for everything. No shit. That's I didn't kind know of what the whole that's point what that meant. Sugar daddy thing. I thought we just begged. So look, there's a moral of the story, and I doubt we have too many sugar babies or sugar daddies even listening right here. Well, let's see. But it. if, if I sugar baby were to give daddy. a sugar baby any advice, and yeah. we talked about this. We talked about you know some different stories right there. I would be, uh, I would get something that was. Long lasting. Maybe. So we talked about the girl who got her college paid for. Maybe you get a guy to help start up a business. Maybe a life changing trip, or an upgraded mindset. Maybe you remember the girl we talked about. I'm learning new things, new yeah. hobbies. Okay, great. But if you do the typical cars, clothes, jewelry, fancy dinner things, next thing you know, you're gonna be an old broke sugar baby, and yeah. nobody wants an old broke sugar baby. That's embarrassing. So be very careful with what you spend. Your sugar baby money on. Yeah. Um, also, yeah, you're right. Like, make that, dude, if you got a sugar daddy, get your bills paid first. Get your bills paid. Get your college degree. Upgrade. Get upgrade, upgrade. And then you can go out and get your little uh, fancy little things. But most people don't have, you know, elevated mindset like that. Most people who are being sugar babies aren't like, yes, yeah, so I'm using him to pay for my college and then medical school and everything is a... Uh, Progressing nicely, and next thing you know, I'll have a sugar baby degree, and I will not no longer need a sugar daddy. These are the times. Most sugar babies like, I want a new purse. I want some new heels. Yeah. I want some sugar. I want some sweet and low. I want it all. Why are you saying it like that? I don't know. I just feel like that's how a sugar baby <laughs> would yeah, talk. Yeah, that's exactly. These are the times I wish I was a woman. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding. Yeah. yeah. I get it, but- I um, would, dude. Even I, if you are, and I'm not even disparaging sugar babies or sex workers or any, like, do what you got to do. But you can be, like, you could be a porn star and also have an elevated mindset. You can be a sugar baby and understand budgeting and saving, investing, and paying off college debt. Like, you can be that. Or you could be a sugar baby or porn star, whatever it is, and just be an idiot and spend all your money on crap, cars, clothes, jewelry, meals, whatever, and still end up broke. So your profession, I, I could care less. It's about the mindset. What would you say to the sugar daddy uh, as far as the aspect of, like, wealth and, like, building wealth and save that money? Like, it, is that in your, like, business plan to have a sugar baby? Is it, <laughs> do you write that off as an Dude, expense? Dude, I've never been a sugar daddy. I don't understand. Do you know anyone that is? 
I live in Miami, buddy. You best believe there's some okay. there, there's some there's some sugar being sprinkled. Yeah, out there over are some there, daddies okay? with some sugar. There's some daddies with them sugar. But a lot of these guys, look, they're probably well off. They're making money. I mean, we talked about the girl. She says she's dated a doctor, a lawyer, a Hollywood director, an investment banker. These guys are making money. Do you ever have any conversation with these guys and be like, so what's that like, bro? No, because I, like, I doubt that people have a boyfriend. Would admit this, you know, really. Like, I mean, I think so. I think I think a sugar daddy's more willing to be like, yeah, that's the that's the girl I take care of, and she takes care of me. All right, I've got a goal. I got to hunt down some sugar daddies yeah. and find out what they're doing, and, then and maybe we can, we can get some sugar babies on the Sazcast, do some interviews. Do both. I think we should okay. do both. We get we you don't have to say goals, their names. Goals. Twenty twenty two goals. Business plan. Um, and then uh, yeah, see what that's like. Anyway, uh, whether you're a sugar baby, sugar daddy, sugar mama, whatever it is. Mindset is the most important thing. If you're going to get someone just to pay your bills, get something long lasting out of it. Yeah. Rather than a handbag. Make sure he or she is at least 50 years of age. That way you got some time. <laughs> right? Right. As opposed but to not the guy too much. He started of the time? when he was 68. And now well, he's no, 81. I think, yeah, I think that's good. You know, it's quicker. Get it over with Cooker. Like he'll okay. be gone soon. So. Yeah. Okay. Well yeah. done. So, anyway, that is the sugar. Uh, money move of the week. <laughs> that's our sugar <laughs> wild money move of the week. Facts. Um, all right, let's get into this other story. We are now coming across 520. We're almost done here. This is our last story of the day. Then we'll answer some of your questions, and then we will keep it moving. We'll keep it grooving uh, and hopefully sprinkle a lot of sugar. Um, here's this next story. Do you want to know how to fly first class for free? So a flight attendant broke down one simple trick that can get you into first class. No questions asked. Here it is. She says when you check in. The people checking you will literally mark you down as suitable for an upgrade. If you look nice and only if you look nice. The trick is that you need to look nice on every single <laughs> flight. If you look like trash, be prepared to sit in the back. You ain't getting an upgrade. Can we okay? go back to a story? Don't be stinky. Don't be stinky. Rule number five. <laughs> there it is. Rule number five. So, yeah. So the flight attendant is like, look, here's the deal. So basically, here's this deal. So we all know that traveling first class means the good stuff. Give me the good stuff, right? You get a comfortable seat. You get to lie down. You get the good stuff going on. You get the good service. You get the hot towel. You get the glass of wine. You get the champagne. You get the tasty food. You're living the good life. Um, so this girl, she posts something on TikTok. Her name is Sierra Kirkpatrick. She posted a video on TikTok, and she asked her friend who was a flight attendant. She goes, listen, what are the tips? What are the tricks? Give me the low down. Give me the good stuff. Give me that insider scoop. She said, I want to know what I got to do in order to get to, you know, the yeah. first class. She goes, listen, uh, that's what you need to do. You need to look nice on every single flight. Now, apparently, they, they literally mark you down as suitable for an upgrade. That's fun. And they judge you on how you look. You know, I don't like to be judged. I don't like to be judged. People are judging you, baby. Adam, you, you and I on a flight would get split up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking good. David, go sit in the bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> um, so you know, if you get if you look like a piece of garbage, you're never going to get upgraded. Is basically what they're saying. <laughs> never so, sit together. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So if you're just rock, you know, because people, you know, if you're rocking sweatpants, you're you know, hoodie, you're a very girl, you just got your hair up in a bun, like you're you're doing nothing. You're probably not going to cut it. Back in the day, you ever seen these images of how oh, people used dude, to fly? The whole three nine. piece suits, a top hat, a fancy dress. Keep in mind, you are smoking cigarettes the whole flight, so yeah, things yeah, yeah. are a little backwards. Now, people don't even know how to act on flights. People are going insane. Yeah. Mass mandates, vaccines, who knows what's going on. People haven't traveled in two years. They get on a flight that, they're, they're insane. There's a flight that, there was a, just a story the other day about a flight from Canada went to Cancun. They were literally popping bottles, busting out the DJ, like par like partying on the plane. It went viral. It was a, it was a um, private jet. Not a private jet, but like, uh, when, uh, like a, not a commercial thing. Okay, gotcha, a, was, gotcha. Um, Charter. Thank you. Oh, hey, come on. First word <laughs> in charter. 19 episodes. Yeah. The charter flight, boom. And they, the airline canceled their tickets. They're like, you can't come back. Like, the, based on your behavior, these videos, like, good luck getting back. Oh, Cancun. no way. Straight up. People are fist fighting on flights. People are acting like trash, looking like trash, acting like trash. You know? What's your, you buy trash. What's your flight attire? Kind of what you got going on now? I like wearing jeans and a nice shirt. Okay. Sometimes if I travel, I wear a jacket. I'll, I'll be honest, yeah. pants. Yeah, I mean, I don't. I mean, I'm born on a suit. Based on based on this information, would yeah. you start dressing a little bit nicer. Depends where I'm going. Depends when you're going. Well, here, I'm that's taking a good like point. an international flight. Yeah. So they'll say, here it is. Well, here it is. Here's the kicker. Here's the kicker. Here's the kicker. 
you know, it says that sometimes they'll upgrade you regardless of status, even if you've never flown this airline, just because you look nice. But note, the trick is this mostly works for international flights on international airlines, not necessarily domestic yeah. flights within the United States. I feel like that's like the... By the way, upgrades are now only conditional for the international flights. Yeah. Not conditional if you were a hand. This is your pilot so, speaking. <laughs> this is your pilot speaking. You look like trash. Go sit in the back. <laughs> Let me hear a good pilot. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking to the person in row B. If you can sit three rows back, thank you very much. You're <laughs> you kind of grossing me out. Exactly. So, what's the takeaway here? Look good. Don't stink. Don't stink. Don't be gross. Dress to impress. Yeah. Whether it's a job interview, whether it's a flight. People are going to judge you. That should be the name of this episode. Don't be stinky. Don't be stinky. Dress to impress. Dress for the job you want. Dress for the potential upgrade. People appreciate it. Clearly, people, if this is real, that they look at your attire and they say, suitable for an upgrade. Yeah. Not suitable for an upgrade. Yeah. Stinky. This dude stank. (laughs) You know? You're not going to get that upgrade. Yeah. Um, So anyways, look your best. Feel your best. Act your best. Do your best. That's that. Um, How shitty though that you dress up your nicest and your finest threads, yep. and then they're like, and you're just waiting for that. Hey, would you like to upgrade? And they don't. It's just awkward because you know they should. Because you look good, but you stack. You're like, damn, I, this is the best I can do. This, this is, is all this, I got. Is man. this not enough? <laughs> anyway, that's a little money move of the week. Hope you can save that money. Fly first class because you're looking good. Um, can we get into a little size of two cents? A little. Um, let me actually just make a public announcement right now. Do it. Um, my Instagram is Saz Talks Money. S O S Talks Money. Lately, you might have noticed there's 10 billion fake accounts that have popped up. Saz Talking Money, Money with Three Y's, Saz Monet. Talks Bitcoin, Saz Talks Money Invest. I'm not hitting you up for any money, Bitcoin, selling you anything. If you're messaging with somebody who's pretending to be me, It's not me, especially if they're asking you for money. So I'm getting a lot of people saying, hey, did you message me about your new Bitcoin enrollment thing? No. Nah, you're good. So I'm going to post this, put it on my account. Hopefully these idiots that are reposting everything that I do post this as well. (laughs) Okay? That's genius. Uh, We'll we'll see. So Ah. we're going to take this and make it a short Do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ugh, these scumbags. Anyway. They will. It's not a, like, dude, I, they hit me up. They're like, yeah. hey, I hope my videos like, are helping you. I'm like. You're like, I'm on the sauce cast, I mean, bro. Like, I know who. Dude, what are you talking about? They're like, uh. <laughs> I got no reply. It's insane. It's they absolutely no insane. Reply. So let me go on to my actual Instagram right now. Uh, I do, every time we do the sauce cast, I ask you a question on my Instagram. My only Instagram, sauce talks money, uh, spelt like money. Not with three Y's or uh, talky Sauce money. Talks just, money. There just it like is. That. We'll answer a few questions and then we'll get the show on the road. Hopefully, you guys got um, some value, but also some tainment out of today's episode. Um, here we go. A little quick rapid fire will be done in the next four minutes. Uh, True Dreamer says thoughts on modern day prenups. I had one. I will recommend them. Um, 50% of a marriages end in divorce, a.k.a. my first marriage. <clears throat> and I had a prenup. The girl signed it willingly because she got it. She didn't. She was hot and broke. Ew. And um, I think at the very least it's worth the conversation. You totally. Know? 100%. Uh, if you don't have anything, if she doesn't have anything, maybe you don't. I don't know. But um, <laughs> there's no, I, 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 got I, nothing I, to lose. My other business partner, straight up, when he got married to his not value my other company, when he got married, they were in their late 20s. He hadn't really made money yet. They got married, had kids, yada, yada. They were married, I don't know, 15 years, got divorced. He is currently paying her 10 grand a month. That sucks, dude. That's, that's. Okay. And I have multiple stories like that. That's terrifying. And I'm sure, you know, women, you know, if they do better, hypergamy, do better than the men. Yeah. The men get the money too, but mostly it's the men cutting the checks. 10 grand a month. For 10 years, dude. No, I'll, no, I'll, literally. 120 grand a year, he's paying his wife. I'll literally Ex-wife. off myself. No yeah, way. I mean, don't do that. <laughs> um, Chad Rad asks, what are your thoughts on MLM, the MLM business model? Do you recommend joining an MLM? Listen, uh, I've never been part of an m M&M, M&M, and I've never been <laughs> an MLM. I've never met m M&M. and But I, I, they're not all scams. Let me just come out and say they're not Ponzi schemes. There's actually some reputable businesses, i.e. PHP. Okay? So people get... Uh, confused with MLM, pyramid scheme, multi-level market, all that. What I would say is 
interview as many people as possible within the company before you join a company. If it's just one person you're taking their word from, maybe you don't trust them. But for instance, use Pat's company. There's 20,000 agents that work for the company. Go ask 100 of them what's it like to work at the company. You'll get your answer. Okay? There it is. So uh, your thoughts can be very lucrative. Uh, just know what you're getting yourself into. Um, Edith says, I just got licensed to work for PHP as an agent. Good for her. Go ask her, Chad. Meet Edith. Edith, meet Chad. Ask her why she joined PHP. Very reputable company. Um, Danny Lama says... Top three stocks to purchase at the start of 2020. I do not give individual stock advice. I will say max out your 401k, max out a Roth IRA, invest in index funds, target date funds, and stay the course. Long-term investing always wins. I don't Sir. have a hot stock tip for you. Sasuke. Best of luck. Um, <clears throat> cool boy Q says... Um, I'm establishing new and better habits and seeing where it takes me. Awesome. New Year's resolutions, go for it. Implement them. Let's see where you're at next year if you actually fulfilled your New Year's resolutions. Everyone's got New Year's resolutions. Everyone wants to get to the gym in the first week. Are you going to be there at 51, 52 weeks into the year? We'll uh, see. Yep, there you go. Um, this guy says an inappropriate comment. I won't read it aloud, but I will say he says FBGM, if you know what that means. Um, Edgar Byer says where have you been been waiting ages for you respect thank you we've been off for a few weeks Christmas New Year's Omicron it happens but we're back um, <clears throat> All Red Kong says I'm thinking of buying a used car to rent out that's about 80% of my savings thoughts dude that sounds like a horrible business model you're buying a depreciating asset that somehow appreciated like this year during COVID but it's not a good investment. You're buying yeah. a depreciating asset, and then you're going to rent it out and try to make money off of it yeah. and use 80% of your savings from doing it. I would steer clear of that idea. This is the best time in history to sell your used car. Yeah. <laughs> gotcha. Um, and then I got a lot of heart emojis and uh, some heart eyes, and I appreciate it. Thank you. A um, couple ladies right there. Oh, hey um, Sugar PBD babies. Podcast, our friend out in India, our boy who runs PBD Podcast. You ever seen this oh, young yes. man? Yeah. He's, he's awesome. Man. He says, please share your top three books on money. I love, I've said it before, I like the Boglehead's Guide to Investing. Amazing. Jack Bogle, he founded Vanguard. Simplified, amazing stuff. Just solidified everything I know when it comes to money. Yep. Read that book. It's awesome. I've quoted the book uh, multiple times. Couple on today's episodes, episode, yep. <clears throat> uh, uh, that book, but also today's episode, I talked about the millionaire next door. Yep. You know, who you think is the millionaire might not be who you think is the millionaire. It might just be the dude driving an old Buick. Bingo. You never know. And then I would say a, a book that, you know, made me start my side hustle that transformed my way of thinking to start this and go for it. And they say it in the book in the first chapter, it's time to burn the ships. And that is Think and Grow Rich yep. by Napoleon Hill. Respect that. So those are three books you can read. Uh, I would start with the first one. I'm sorry. I would start with Think and Grow Rich if you want to change your mindset. I would read The Bogleheid's Guide to Investing if you want to understand investing more. And I would read um, The Millionaire Next Door. If you just want to understand just how to handle money, saving, budgeting, being smart with your money, not being flashy, not being too fancy, and obviously not being gross. We yeah. talked about that. <coughs> David, it feels good to be back, doesn't oh, it? So good. This was Sazcast episode 17. Episode 18 um, will be legal at that point. We'll be old enough to <gasps> vote. Um, and We should vote for something. We should vote. We should do a poll. We should do something. Yeah. But we will be in the new building. Oh. Saz course. This is the Sazcast. Saz course is currently being worked on. If you want to get better that. with money, uh, I'm currently working on that with... The co-author of your next five moves, PBD's book. His name is Greg Dinkin. What a guy, Greg Dinkin. We're currently working on the Saz Shout course uh, of basically how to go from zero to a million bucks in the bank in ten years. How I did it, at least, and what you can take from that, and understanding these six principles of wealth that I talk about: having a game plan for your money, not losing the money game, starting to win, saving that money, watching your money grow, protect your greatest asset, so you can be. Chillin, and this is my chillin'. David, we're gonna get to your chillin' soon. But Hell that's yeah. it for the week. Thank you guys. Thank you, everybody, 
Thank you, Jorge. He, he had a great addition at one point. Charter. Uh, he said charter. That was awesome. Thank you guys for listening. David, thank you for being here. Good, thank to, you for good to have me. you back. You look great. You only yawned about two or three times towards the end. <laughs> Amazing way to stay through. Uh, I've been um, hungry over here. We're very hungry. We'll get you some lasagna. But anyway, yeah, thank you guys for being part of the Sazcast. We were off for a few weeks, but we back in full effect. Feels good to be back. We will see you next Thursday live from the new office, Valuetainment value headquarters, coming into full effect. Enjoy your weekend. And as always, David, remember to save that money. All we talk is money. All we talk is money. One day. All we talk is money.